that is really for those who do not respond to medical therapy. The majority of the patients will be on some kind of a medication and respond well. There are other therapies that are experimental that don't work very well. They're under investigation. Now, let's talk briefly about the other type of incontinence problem, which is called stress incontinence. It used to be called genuine stress urinary incontinence. I don't know why they said genuine. Well, well if it's stress, it's stress. It has to be genuine, right? Well, maybe they use the word genuine because very often you can have a situation where it's a little bit of a stress problem, a little bit of an urgency problem, urgent continence. So it's a mixture of the two. So it's called mixed urinary incontinence. That is perhaps, that explains it why they thought it was necessary to use the word genuine to say, I am pretty sure this is only stress incontinence problem. This is not an urgent continence. So they called it genuine stress urinary incontinence. Now what is this problem? This problem happens very often to women who had one or two or three or four or five children delivered through the birth canal. Every single time you deliver a baby, it, so to speak, tears the muscles and the ligaments of the pelvic floor. So the pelvic floor kind of sags down. It's called prolapse. What is prolapse? Think of like a herniation where there's a weakness in the wall and all the contents of your abdomen, all the organs, want to break through and come out. The entire body, every system organ, there's a 15, 20 meter long gut and many other organs. They are all held together through a fascia. There's a very tough sheet that covers your entire body, which is, prevents it from coming out. But there are weak areas in the body which if they tear, like people get herniation, abdominal hernias, um, uh, femoral hernias. So wherever there's a weakness, that part of the tissue can weaken and starts to bulge out. Sometimes you can have a problem where bowel, it, it not only weakens but makes, creates a little hole in the fascia and the bowel wants to come out because bowel has pressure, it always wants to come out. So it will go through that hole and get strangulated. So hernia, pelvic prolapse refers to herniation, weakness. So weakness you can have in other areas. This is, now we are talking about the weakness in the vagina. What are some of the common things? There are several organs there that can prolapse. Your bladder can come down, your rectum can bulge into the vagina, your intestines can come down, your uterus can fall down. An easy way to understand what is above your vagina. You go vagina is a dead end. It's like cul de sac, you can't go any further. There's only at the top, which is called apex, there is cervix sticking out. That's all you see. You go in there, there's a dead end. Cervix is really part of the uterus. So we call it, uh, you know, cervix because it's the lower segment of the uterus because it has its own cancers. So, so to speak, it's an organ of its own. Now, imagine the best way to understand there are three tubes. The middle tube is the vagina. There's a tube above it, which is, your, which is a opening into the bladder. And then there is a tube beneath the vagina, which is your rectum. So there are three openings, three orifices. You go in there, and these three organs are sandwiched on top of each other. So easy way to understand that the bladder and your vagina, upper vagina, share a wall. It makes sense? In other words, the floor of the bladder is the ceiling of the vagina. That sh should make sense, right? Similarly, Vagina and the rectum share a wall. So
So the floor of the vagina is the same layer as the ceiling of the rectum. So what happens now if you keep that in mind, that over oversimplified <laughs> version of anatomy, if you keep that in mind, it will be a lot easier to understand a lot of the things, what these prolapses are and how they happen. Now, understanding the, the prolapse of the apex of the vagina, that shouldn't be too hard because that's where baby comes from. So it puts pressure downwards, it tears those ligaments so the uterus and the cervix, they want to come out. In the same direction where the tube is, the tunnel is, where they want to come out. It, now it depends on how bad the prolapse is. It can go, come as far down as the middle of the vagina, it can come further down to the tip of the vagina. It gets worse, some women have four, five, six babies it can come out. So there are patients where you can see the uterus is hanging between the legs like a pendulum. Now that's easy to understand because that's the direction from where the baby comes down. And it tears those ligaments which is holding up the cervix. Those ligaments are torn so now the uterus and the cervix is free to fall down because nothing is holding it up. How about the prolapse of the bladder? How would that happen? It simultaneously breaks those ligaments that hold the bladder and the vagina together and to the bones. So what you might see is that that wall that bladder and vagina share with each other, that wall will bog down and start to bulge into the vagina like a balloon. So sometimes that can get so big so remember, this is the wall that vagina and bladder share with each other. Upper part of the vagina and the bladder share. So the bladder starts to bulge into the vagina like a balloon. Again, there's a pop cue system which is very, very technical. I won't go into that. I'm trying to simplify everything so it's easy to understand. So the bladder balloons into vagina and it can come further. There's no limitation. It can come to the middle of the vagina, to the tip of the vagina, or it can completely come out. So just if you see a patient, something sticking out, if your grandma or someone has something coming out, you can't tell just by looking at it. You have to see, is it the bladder? Is it the uterus? Where the weakness is? Very often, if you have one kind of prolapse, you will also have a little bit relaxation of other organs. Because when baby comes down, it's not going to say, okay, I'm going to cause the bladder to fall, but I'm not going to have the rectum to fall. So it's going to cause the defect in all organs. That is why it's not uncommon to examine a patient. As you see, there's a bladder fall, the rectum is bulging into the vagina, and the uterus is coming down. So there's a little bit defect of each organ. But it's not uncommon for to see that Certain patients tend to have a major bladder prolapse, but the uterus is coming down a little bit, but it's still in place. There are patients, their bladder is kind of still intact, it's falling down a little bit, but their rectum is dramatically bulges out into vagina. When you bear down that wall of the rectum, which is supposed to be straight down, which is the floor of the vagina, it puckers into the vagina and it can really bulge. So this is what happens. These patients very common, commonly have constipation problems. Because as the, as the excrements come down, there is a bulge here. Instead of coming out this way, they lodge in that pouch. And then they, the water gets absorbed and they, it gets very hard. And these patients are very, very all constipated all the time. And because of that bulge, some women will, when they go to number two, they will use the fingers of their vagina and they put it in the vagina and kind of push down in order to have a bowel movement. Or they will press the area which is between the anus and the vagina. They will press on it. It allows, help the bowel uh, feces to come out. 
So very common constipation problem in women who have a prolapse of uh, the rectum. Those who have prolapse of the bladder, it's extremely common for these women to have what we earlier, early on called stress incontinence. Why is that? This is a rather common problem, women who delivered babies through the vagina. What happens is, as bladder falls into the vagina, its pressures change. It's not that hard to understand. It's very simple physics. Bladder is the abdominal organ. It's supposed to live in the abdomen right behind the pubic bone. It's not a vaginal organ. So when it changes the location from your abdomen, it goes and starts to live in the vagina. What happens is every time you bear down or you cough or you sneeze or you lift a weight or you go jogging or you jump a trampoline, it causes pressure in your abdomen. <coughs> you push down on the pelvic floor and now bladder, remember, it's not in your abdomen it is subject to different pressures because now it is really exposed to the outside world. Anything in the vagina technically has the same pressures as the outside because there's a free opening. But once you are abdominal organ, you are now protected. You are, I don't care how hard I cough, the same pressures apply to the bladder as other organs. So there is really no reason to, for the bladder bladder walls to compress. But once it's in the vagina, it literally has different pressures. Pressures in the urethra can change. Pressures in the bladder can change. And there are certain tests that can be done to see where the problem is. So this is a rather very common problem with women who deliver babies through the vagina. Now, once in a while, you'll see someone had three C cesarean sections and they also leak. And you wonder why? It's very simple. It's not uncommon for women to go into labor and it's not that you are having your first baby, they're going to cut you open. Of course, God made the vagina to have babies, so a woman is going to try to deliver normally first and sometimes they are in labor five hours, seven hours, ten hours, twelve hours. 14 hours, 18 hours, and then the doctor says, I don't think you're going to do it. And some women want to give it more time. So remember that being in labor for so long, you are having contraction every five minutes, every two minutes. That is going to tear the muscles slowly. It's going to weaken your pelvic floor. So it's not surprising that there are some women who had all cesarean section and that they leak. Again, nothing is black and white in medicine. Medicine is not like mathematical. It, there are always other factors. Some women never had a child. They leak. That's not that common. Just as it's not that common for a woman who had all C-sections to have leak problems, it's not that common. But you see those cases. Now, why a woman who never had a baby leaks? There are many, many other reasons. It's not a simple thing to describe. For example, you are smoking for 30 years, two packs a day, what do you think happens when you smoke that much? You cough all the time. When you cough, every time you cough, <coughs> you're constantly pushing, hammering down on the pelvic floor. It gets weak. There are patients who were never smokers, never had a baby. They just happen to be very overweight. Just being overweight constantly causes pressure on the pelvic floor. That can cause a leak problem. Although I would say the biggest culprit that causes the leak problem, the so-called stress urinary incontinence, is having babies through the vagina. So this is very different from urgent continence, which